Good afternoon. An Young Hashimnika. To Acting President Wang Kyo Han, thank you for your kind words and the hospitality you've shown me and my family in welcoming us to the Republic of Korea, my very first stop in the Asian Pacific as Vice President of the United States. It's a great honor for me to be in South Korea today, and I bring greetings from the President of the United States, President Donald Trump. And on his behalf, I'm here to express the unwavering support of the United States for our long-standing alliance with South Korea. President Trump and I are grateful for your strong partnership with the United States. We commend you personally for your steady hand in this time of transition in South Korea. The President and our entire administration admire the South Korean people's commitment to the rule of law and the democratic process, and we look forward to the upcoming election with great anticipation. While change is coming on May the 9th, the people of South Korea may be assured. Whatever change happens in your elections, the commitment of the United States to South Korea's safety and security will remain unchanged. On behalf of the President of the United States, my message to the people of South Korea is this. We are with you 100%. Even in these troubled times, we stand with you for a free and secure future. The United States of America stands shoulder to shoulder with the Republic of Korea and the service and vigilance of some 37,500 U.S. soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines on this frontier of freedom stands as a testament to the enduring partnership between our people. The alliance between South Korea and the United States is the linchpin of peace and security on the Korean Peninsula and indeed throughout the Asian Pacific. The United States commitment to South Korea is ironclad and immutable. And under President Trump's leadership, I know our alliance will even be stronger. Our nations will be safer, and the Asia Pacific will be more secure. Nowhere is that more evident than with our commitment to confront the region's most dangerous and urgent threat to peace and security, the regime in North Korea. Since 1992, the United States and our allies have stood together for a denuclearized Korean Peninsula. We hope to achieve this objective through peaceable means, but all options are on the table. Just in the past two weeks, the world witnessed the strength and resolve of our new president in actions taken in Syria and Afghanistan. North Korea would do well not to test his resolve or the strength of the armed forces of the United States in this region. We will continue to deploy the THAAD missile defense system as a defensive measure called for by the alliance and for the alliance. We will continue to evolve a comprehensive set of capabilities to ensure the security of South Korea. And as our Secretary of Defense made clear here in South Korea not long ago, we will defeat any attack and we will meet any use of conventional or nuclear weapons with an overwhelming and effective response. Strategic patience has been the approach of the last American administration and beyond. For more than two decades, the United States and our allies have worked to peacefully dismantle North Korea's nuclear program and alleviate the suffering of their people. But at every step of the way, North Korea answered our overtures with willful deception, broken promises, and nuclear and missile tests. Over the past 18 months, North Korea has conducted two unlawful nuclear tests and an unprecedented number of ballistic missile tests even conducting a failed missile launch as I traveled here for this visit. The era of strategic patience is over. Earlier this month, President Trump spoke with you, Acting President Huang, to reaffirm the strength of our alliance. As I reassured you today, we will continue to closely consult with South Korea and your leadership as we make decisions moving forward. We also call on other regional powers and the entire international community to join us to confront North Korea and demand that it abandon its nuclear and ballistic missile programs, to turn away from its renewed hostility toward its neighbor, 
and to end the repression of its own people. Earlier this month, President Trump met with Chinese President Xi at the Southern White House. The two leaders noted the urgency of the threat posed by North Korea's weapons programs, and each of them reaffirmed their commitment to a denuclearized Korean peninsula during that meeting on April the 7th. They also committed to fully implement UN Security Council resolutions and to increase cooperation to convince North Korea to abandon its illicit weapons program. It is heartening to see China commit to these actions, but the United States is troubled by China's economic retaliation against South Korea for taking appropriate steps to defend itself. The better path would be for China to address the North Korean threat that is actually making such defensive measures necessary. Now, while issues like that remain, the President and I have great confidence that China will properly deal with North Korea. But as President Trump made clear just a few short days ago, if China is unable to deal with North Korea, the United States and our allies will. So today it is my privilege on behalf of President Trump to reaffirm the United States enduring commitment to the security and prosperity of South Korea and to ensure the people of South Korea of our unbreakable bond. We're bound together by our shared values, but also by our shared sacrifice. A free and democratic South Korea was forged in the fires of sacrifice by soldiers from both our lands. And my father was one of them. Sixty-five years ago, Second Lieutenant Edward J. Pence of the 45th Infantry Division in the United States Army fought alongside brave South Korean forces to win the freedom of this land. While he came home to raise a family, he had friends in uniform from America and Korea who went home to eternity. So too, the friendship between our two free nations is eternal. We have bled together. We have prospered together. And on that foundation, the people of the United States of America and South Korea will face the future together. With courage, determination, and faith, we go together. Kachi, Kapshida. So thank you, Mr. Acting President, for your hospitality. It is a great, great honor to be with you today. 